I'm going to demonstrate making a simple financial report in Excel statements for Dynamics SL. So I'm just going to open up Excel. Um, this whole Excel statements uh, program works from within Excel. And I'm going to use some of the built-in functions in Excel statements to drop in the company ID, the ledger ID, and I'll create a little drop-down list for one segment of my sub-account here. And then I will drop in my chart of accounts as well for that company. So I'm going to just create a simple trial balance for my entire chart of accounts here. And you can see I, by using the functionality off of the Excel statements insert from SL button, um, I was able to have that go and pick up for me uh, the, in this case, the company, the ledger ID, and the subaccounts I want to use. And I had it create a drop down based on the first segment of that subaccount. And this will alter the mask that's going to be used for subaccounts here. Uh, and we'll just leave it on all subaccounts for now. And dropping in the chart of accounts, it also uh, I left the option on for it to uh, put the Excel statements functions in here to get the account descriptions for each of those. Uh, there are also functions to get company names, ledger names, as you can see. So that's where these are coming from as well. And that was one of the options on here was to create descriptions. And I left that on, obviously. Uh, now, the real power of Excel statements is these functions that have been added to Excel. So I'm going to go and get one here. So I started typing it. This is just an Excel capability in that little drop down list. If you uh, highlight the one you want and hit tab, it'll auto complete that for you. Another Excel capability that not many people use is I'm going to do Control Shift A, and that will uh, put the argument names for this function into the function. Now, because we have very cleverly named these cells the same as those argument names, uh, which is why you saw that the colored box is referring to the colors here, uh, this, this is going to make it a lot quicker for me. I'm going to go and name a couple of cells manually here. This is the name box in Excel, upper left name box. So the other two arguments I'm going to use whoop, <laughs> are uh, fiscal year and period. This is the demo data for uh, Dynamics SL that uh, comes with the system. So you can install these demo databases. Uh, I should say it's the demo data for Solomon since it actually does go back uh, the data is in 1999. Uh, so I've got my function here. The only argument it doesn't have right now is account. The other ones, it's all referring to named ranges. I'm going to make the column absolute and the row relative. If you don't understand some of this Excel functionality or terminology, uh, we will have a training video just on, on using some of this Excel functionality. Hit enter. And now I have my balance. So the idea with the named ranges here is very, we've very cleverly named our ranges the same names as used in the arguments for this function. And so uh, in that way, I don't have to go type them in or find them or anything like that. I don't have to make them absolute either because the named range is always absolute. So there is my balance, my year to date balance for period 11. Uh, for this company, that ledger, that account, all subaccounts in this case, um, this fiscal year and that period. And we're going to do a trial balance. So I'll call this my beginning balance. And because it's my beginning balance, I actually want period minus one. I want last period in here. Um, and let's put another function. This is probably the workhorse function in Excel statements. So period to date balance. Control Shift A, 
Again, the only thing it doesn't have is my account. F4, F4, F4. So there's my balance for this period. I'm going to go get the period month name, which is just another Excel statements function. And so this particular company is on a calendar year fiscal year, so period 11 is November. And then we'll have our ending balance. And let's just make this that plus that. It's nice being in Excel. And I'll just format these, right, justify them. Uh, let's make these columns accounting format. And now I'm going to use the Excel fill handle. When my cursor changes to a plus, double click on that, and it will just copy down my, my list, copy those formulas down. And so there's my trial balance. I'm just going to go ahead and freeze my panes. And you can now scroll down. All these numbers are coming directly from the Dynamics SL database. If I change my period, you'll see them all change. Uh, now I can double click on one of these numbers, and that will show me the components with the mask that I used. So I didn't use a mask for account, but I did for sub account. So it's showing me all sub accounts that have any history with that account. Uh, and in this case, two of them have a balance in this period. I can then double click on one of those and it shows me the transactions in GL for that period for that account, sub account combination that made up that balance. And you can see a couple of these have notes on them. My notes are a little screwed up right now, but uh, these are notes that were entered in Dynamics SL for that batch. Um, you can see this is a check batch from AP. I'll double click on that. So I'm going to double click on anywhere on this row for this batch 99 in AP, and it then shows me the entire batch. So this isn't just the account that I started drilling down on, but this is all transactions for all accounts, subaccounts in that batch. So you can see this is a fairly nice auditing tool as well, um, and it can obviously replace FRX or Management Reporter. You've got your information in Excel where you want it. You don't have to go through any steps to get it into Excel. This is all updated real time. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.